educational opportunities and you're not like like I said like some of their textbooks were like really old and if you don't have a recent textbook you're not learning the same material because things change like science changes over history I mean time and <laughs> you know so like I said the education wasn't the same people were I mean yeah I think that's right all I have to say on that <laughs> I just want to follow up with what Amanda was saying you were saying they were trying to create a equality mm -hmm. and my so my, my ultimate question I was trying to get at is is that something you can legislate? Can you legislate how we're going to feel about one another? No, I think it's uh, done by our nature uh, to want to put ourselves above someone else and it is us putting ourselves above a different race. Do you know the difference between equality and equity? Because I've heard, I've kind of heard you allude to both, and I'm just curious if, if, if you could speak to the difference between the two. I know the general, but I'm afraid that the general idea that I have is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Equality is treating everyone the same regardless. Mm -hmm. Equity is ensuring that everyone has what they need to be successful. So what is I'm thinking uh, yeah, down the road, uh, and get out of high school, go through college, uh, you start families of your own. What are you going to pass on to your children to make it better? make the situation better, to, to, to teach diversity, to teach tolerance, to teach that, you know, we are all one in the more of God, right? So uh, what are you each going to do individually uh, with your kids to make it better globally? One of, the, one of the things that I think I would like to teach my kids is that, you know, skin color comes from, like, these little melon sites in your skin. So when you think of it, skin color being just, like, little chemicals and cells, like, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Like, if you, you're just thinking that, oh, like, these cells, these chemicals in my body work differently than they do in Danielle's, <laughs> and that's the only reason why I look different. And when you teach them, when you teach them when it, like that, when you teach it in that aspect, it doesn't seem as big of a deal. Like, it doesn't seem like we're any different. It's just things in my body that are different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that I definitely want my kids to realize and know that they're they're not better than everybody else. Their skin color, their background does not make them better than anybody else. What does make them better per se than anybody else is their work ethic and how much they're willing to learn to work to get better. Yeah, I think uh, definitely when I raise my children, I'm going to raise them. Definitely teaching them scripture a lot. I'm just going to talk about how we're supposed to love each other as Christ has loved us. When I grow up, I will adopt, so I will have different like, races and different ethnic groups. I feel like we'll have the same like ethnic Thank you. I can't yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so obviously you won't look the same on the outside because obviously if I get adopted to the clients like they don't look the same then obviously I definitely want to teach my kids that it doesn't matter so much what you look like on the outside, it matters what's inside and it matters like your heart and it just matters that you're not always gonna agree with everyone and you're not always gonna look like everyone and that doesn't matter what really matters is how much respect you give everyone and how you treat everyone the same opportunities. Let me thank each of you for, for your responses, and also let me say that, boy, the, the passion that each of you speak with uh, is giving me hope for the future. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so there's just three minutes left. Okay, we spent most of our time talking about, I, I believe, um, sort of black-white relations. Mm -hmm. Do we have other race relation issues in the United States? Yes. yes. Recently in the media, um, I follow this account called Voice Embracing Black Culture. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great account. But, um, and you don't need to apologize for following <laughs> <laughs> um, But a lot of the things that have come up recently um, 
are between Latinos and African Americans, mm -hmm. actually. And it's really interesting because at one point, like Latinos and African Americans were allies because they both faced discrimination, like they both struggled in America, so it was easy to find comfort within each other. But now things have changed because the Latinos have recently sided with, kind of agree more with the Republican Party and politically they're different because they, they go down different paths. So Latinos want to focus on the things that make us the same and how we're all similar while African Americans want to embrace all the things that make us different and celebrate those things. And so there's been a lot of tension between the two just because of politically and just the things that they see differently. desired goal is the same uh, or similar, might not be the exact same, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they still want to be heard, they want their uh, needs to be met, but the ways that both groups want to go about it are very different and I think that's where they are divided and that's where they collide with the budget and with the budget. I would definitely have to agree with that to minorities because for so long they've been like I don't want to say like in the shadows of political but like if you look like at politicians they're all usually white males and everyone wants their voice but they are definitely going about it that way and I would say other than uniting to accomplish that one specific goal to have their voices heard it's their fighting for that power and fighting for that power and just there's also we also looked up Asians and whites and so we've heard about, I don't know if you've heard about it, but I've recently heard about, you know, the Harvard Law case with the Asian American students and how they kind of base their curriculum differently. Like, they, if you're an Asian American student, they're going to convince you to apply only if you have a 13, about a 1370 on your visa, while if you're another race, you only have to get a 13. So, in that aspect, there's a lot of tension between Asian Americans and not really particularly white people, just more like the Harvard School who work in that administration because they're being discriminated against just because of their color rather than their Yeah, they could. They